Well, welcome to today's talk. And of course, we're taking interest in global health matters on this channel. And there are still those that are advocating for global vaccination, that we should be vaccinating 70% of the population in all countries of the world, despite the fact we've had this Omicron BA1 and Omicron BA2, and indeed now the Omicron BA2 subvariants going all around the world with their massive transmissibility generating huge amounts of natural immunity. But let's consider this as fairly as we can. Uh, need for global vaccination, well there's certainly a question mark there now isn't there? Now WHO wants uh, fully vaccinated 70% of the population in every country by June 2022. Uh, this is not, emphatically not, going to happen. Uh, the WHO uh, aspiration has completely uh, failed and failed quite dramatically in, in quite a few areas. African Union still wants 70% of the population to be vaccinated in all African countries. Again, this is simply not going to happen. Now, which countries in poorer countries are at 70%? Just a bit out of interest, even the United States is below 70% fully vaccinated but poorer countries which have reached the 70 percent fully vaccinated threshold uh bangladesh small country of bhutan in the himalayas cambodia and uh, nepal so apart from bangladesh relatively small population countries most of the poorer countries are actually under 20 percent fully uh, vaccinated rate it's been a very uh, very low vaccine uptake and well, very low vaccine availability uh, in many of these areas. Dr. Seth Berkeley, chief executive of Gavi. Now, Gavi seems to be the non-profit group which is looking after the COVAX, the WHO Global Vaccination Scheme. So uh, Dr. Berkeley is saying this pandemic is not over yet, far from it. And it's imperative that countries use the doses available to them to protect as much as possible uh, to, to protect as much of their population as possible. Well, my impression was that this is what Omicron has, has done, uh, generating natural immunity in, in um, I think we could say billion, yeah, we can say billions of people. Is it still necessary to vaccinate them now? Um, well, uh, Dr. Seth Berkeley certainly seems to think so, but I've put a, a couple of uh, question marks there because really... I think times have changed and there are other priorities. Now, Gavi has secured 4.8 billion in funding. Um, the question is, would this 4.8 billion, and that is a lot of dollars, would that be better spent on other health priorities, which we've looked at in some detail on this channel? Uh, trauma, malaria, respiratory diseases in children, gastrointestinal diseases, tropical parasitology. Would it be better spent on those other areas? Tuberculosis, HIV, the list just goes on and on of the morbidities and mortalities that particularly affect poorer countries. So 4.8 billion on COVID vaccines when the pandemic has essentially passed. It really is a question mark now, I think. Africa's vaccination rate Fewer than 17% have received a primary vaccination dose. Uh, last month, uh, vaccinations down in Africa by 35%. So the, the momentum's definitely gone out of this programme. Uh, this is it's not looking like it's going to happen, is it? And indeed, I don't believe it should happen. Uh, this Dr. Uh, as a, uh, D Dr. Isaac, Nigeria Africa Centre for Disease Control and Prevention, would still like 70% to be vaccinated, really? OK, yeah, this is your opinion. You're entitled to it. Uh, there was a time people were very desperate to get vaccinated, but the vaccines were not there. True. And then they realised that without the vaccine, they wouldn't die. And uh, many people have had the natural infection, the vast majority very mildly. And we do know that antibody levels in Africa, for example, are remarkably high. Now, there is a, a big meeting at the White House uh, next month in May, uh, and uh, a lot of people are hoping to get funding for global COVID vaccination. I would really question the need for that. Let's hope that there is funding, but it goes to other areas that we looked at. Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, death rates are very low. 
Now, there's been this ongoing debate. Is it the fact that deaths simply aren't reported in Africa? Well, there's some of that, of course. That was certainly the case in India. But in Africa, it really doesn't look like it is. It looks like the death rates have been genuinely low. They're obviously higher than they've been reported because of poor reporting in rural areas and uh, slum areas in cities, for example. But um, the, the death rate in Africa has not been massive. There's not, there's not massive underreporting. So we can certainly say that this is true. But there is a surge in measles threatening 20 million children. Now, measles is a very transmissible disease and it still kills, well, about 150,000 children a year die, die of measles. And it is preventable and the child gets very sick. And the ones that don't die, they can be sick for a long time. They be, can become immunosuppressed. They can get other infections. There can be neurological complications. There can be all sorts of uh, all sorts of pretty hideous complications, so much better to prevent it in the first place. So measles uh, vaccine, I would be 100% in favour of. Um, so even just in DRC, it's threatening 20 million children. This is severe. Now, uh, Dr. Fit Chris Christopher uh, Mabula, uh, no, Doctors Without Borders, East Africa. DRC government cannot spare resources for supplementary measles vaccinations, dear me. This is just, uh, I mean, really, to, to me, this would be the, the absolute priority to vaccinate children. And uh, m m maybe the White House uh, Global COVID Summit might uh, extend that to COVID plus measles. So I would like that to be called the COVID plus all the other wretched diseases that people are dying of around the world, not just COVID. Um, Serum Institute of India has basically stopped making COVID vaccines now, so... To, to them, uh, they must think that the peak is uh, over. They had this huge stockpile and there just wasn't the demand. Now, in Africa, um, before Omicron, uh, at least two-thirds of Africans had already been infected with the Wuhan, uh, largely with the Alpha and the Delta strain. Uh, two-thirds. And the rest, pretty well all of the rest of the people in Africa, will have been exposed to Omicron. So what what, what the actual um, infection rate is in Africa now, we don't know for sure. I would think it's well over 90%. So the idea that you would spend $48 billion, what was it, $48 billion or something, $4.8 uh, $4 billion vaccinating people, the vast majority of whom have already been exposed to natural infection, just makes no immunological or economic or glow just makes no sense to me at all that you would want to do that because natural immunity uh, natural infection generates a good quality natural uh, immunity and the evidence that hybrid immunity is better than just having natural infection I, d I just don't believe that 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 information is there now we're very frustrated because we don't get this information very clearly but the, the information I have is that if someone's had the natural infection, vaccine is not giving them further protection or not significant further protection. Much better to protect children against measles, especially as it affects children under the age of five. And um, the, 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 this professor from uh, South Africa, uh, there's very little value to it. That's vaccinating everyone. In fact, we will gain much more by getting uh, to more than 90 percent. Uh, in 90% vaccination rate in the over 50s and people with comorbidities. So he's talking about targeting COVID vaccine. Um, to me, um, because I believe in individualised healthcare, I would only want someone to take the vaccine if they had uh, if they were negative uh, for SARS coronavirus two antibodies. Whereas someone had the natural infection, I wouldn't really want them to have the vaccine. Anyway, let's go over to uh, Wafafa in uh, Uganda, who, of course, is a medical officer. Uh, Wafafa, please report as you do. Thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> Hello guys, I'm still at Mbale Regional Fire Hospital where we have uh, a treatment center 
or ICU for COVID-19 patients. And as I talk, the good news is no one is currently admitted in ICU with COVID-19. And this is what the WHO had to say. And of course, this is what I've been waiting all along uh, to hear from them because we've been uh, saying it over and over for those of you who have been following my COVID-19 updates on this channel. Now this is what uh, they, yeah, they said on their Twitter handle. I'm reading this from WHO African region. Uh, it was posted five days ago and this is what it was saying. Africa is facing its longest running decline in COVID-19 cases. Infections have dropped from a peak of over 308,000 cases weekly at the start of 2022 to less than 20,000 last week. Now, uh, I have been saying that uh, cases have totally uh, decreased and uh, with Uganda to be specific, we reported Omicron in December and that was towards the end of 2021. So since we began 2022, we've seen that the cases have rapidly dropped when Omicron came in. When you look at the vaccination, uh, in March, Africa had vaccinated about 15% of the population fully. Those are the people who had received at least two doses of vaccines. So there is just a difference of one month between March and now. And it is not even a month because we have not yet completed uh, April. So I believe I've not yet cross-checked with the data, but at this time, I believe we have not doubled the other figure because it took us a long time to reach 15%. So by now, it is approximately 20% coverage. So uh, with those low vaccination rates, we can't attribute a uh, decline in this number of cases uh, to vaccination. We are still performing very poor when it comes to vaccines. So I am not an anti-vaccine. As you all know, vaccines do a great job and they have eliminated a lot of dangerous diseases like polio, uh, we vaccinate for polio children, we vaccinate for hepatitis B, we vaccinate for TB, we vaccinate for whooping cough, for some pneumonias, and all those things. So, and even in, uh, for cancers, we do vaccination for HPV. So I'm not against uh, vaccination, as you all know, because I know vaccines do a tremendous job. What I'm trying to do to say is that we can't attribute the decline in the number of cases to vaccines because the rates are not still convincing. Uh, but I attribute them to Omicron because when you look at the statement that uh, WHO published five days ago, it shows that the numbers of cases in Africa started reducing uh, in the beginning of this year and yet to be specific in Uganda we reported a micron variant in December and that is when uh, cases started decreasing across Uganda, East Africa and uh, the whole Africa. When you look at the number of cases reported daily even like in Uganda yesterday they reported four cases even Kenya only four cases and in both countries, I saw the positivity rate of 0.2%. So this shows that the uh, numbers have totally reduced, uh, but our request was, since we can't attribute the decline uh, to this number of cases to COVID-19 vaccine, of course it can partly be the reason, but still it is not convincing. So we were thinking that uh, people have grown, like uh, developed herd immunity. They have been exposed to Omicron and their bodies have created protection. That's why cases have decreased and there's no need to add more vaccine. If someone has gotten exposed and 
someone has recovered. Now, one of the reasons, of course, as why people got exposed, Omicron, you know, it was spreading very fast. That was causing mild symptoms, but it could spread very fast. And um, of course, many people didn't have even protective gears. So many people were exposed, many people got sick, but they didn't get severe symptoms. And now more people have developed immunity and we no longer detect a lot of cases. That is uh, my submission. But if you have another explanation, please feel free to submit it in the comment section. Thank you very much. i see you. Am I back on? Yes, I am back on. Excellent. Thank you for that, Rafafa. As always, excellent report. Massive decline, at most 20% vaccinated in the Uganda situation, for example. Four cases in the country. Um, the decline is not attributable to vaccination because only 15 to 20 percent of the people in the population have been vaccinated. And yet there he is. He's sitting there in the treatment centre and there ain't nobody there, <laughs> which, of course, uh, is exactly as we would want it to be. So I'm really delighted about that empty treatment centre. Um, now, if Afa did mention uh, herd immunity there, I think there's a question mark over that. Is it herd immunity? Now, have they got herd immunity in, in Uganda, which would have meant the infection has gone away? It's possible. Possible. We don't know. Or is it, ha as we're developing now in the West, uh, that the condition has become endemic, that it's here all the time? So um, I suspect that the situation in, in, in Africa is one of endemicity. Uh, but if evidence arises that it's actually herd immunity and they've actually managed to get rid of this virus altogether, then I think that gives us even more uh, to learn from the uh, Africa experience. So thanks for that, Rafafa, and uh, thank you for watching.